we can start. Perfect. So welcome everyone to the next iteration of the community meeting. Today is March the 8th and we have quite something here prepared. As always, please add yourself to the agenda attendees list and if you have any items, add them here. I'd like to start with some news. Uh, the first one is we finally have a curated roadmap. So I took the time in the last days to <clears throat> uh, clean up a bit the roadmap because it was not uh, reflecting the reality anymore. It was more than a year old. And I put here uh, what we plan to work on, what's in the backlog, what we are currently working on and what we just released and it's ready for you to pre in preview basically. And as always, all the done elements here. <clears throat> so now you should be able to see whatever is happening at any time inside the project. And since this meeting is recorded, I am now promising that I will try to keep this uh, roadmap curated and always reflecting the reality. There are also filters on the top. <clears throat> so you, if you are looking more into creating an integration, you can add uh, to the integration label and then it will be appearing here. Uh, for instance, I know that you, Sudipto, you're working towards the Datadog integration. So I will add that label to the ticket and it will be appearing here and filter correctly. Uh, but one cool thing is that we don't have only code contributions. If you are more towards the community support, you can also uh, work on item listed here. Or if you're more towards the documentation one, there are also items here. In particular for documentation, integration and community, these last three tabs, I didn't manage to uh, prepare everything. So in the next days, there will be more tickets there after I finish to label everything correctly. But this is a nice way to see what's currently in development and what's upcoming for you to know where we should focus our efforts. And with that, I will then jump into the next uh, status report for the Lifecycle Toolkit and Captain if there are no questions from the community. In the chat, I see nothing. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Okay, then I will jump into the status report. <clears throat> so for uh, KLT, we recently did a big change where we split our operator into two different operators, one that handles only metrics and the other one that handles lifecycle. And we also did a renaming for that. So if you have something in place, mind that in version 0 0.7, you will have the scheduler, the certificate manager, the lifecycle operator that handles the observability and the lifecycle delivery of your application. And finally, the metrics operator that has this um, generic custom server. And for Captain V1, we are cooking the release of 1.3. You can see that there are some small bug fixes prepared for that. And we will also go over all the dependencies because we have a lot of bumping independencies to be done. And after that, we will do the release of 1.3. So expect something in the next weeks. Similarly, for the lifecycle toolkit, 0 0.7, we envision to release it by the end of next week. And cool thing of the lifecycle toolkit that I forgot to mention is we finally have Helm chart support. Okie dokie. Then this is everything for the news. And I would like to give then the word to Simon with the documentation setup. Yes, hello, thank you. So as I represented it last week already, so should I share the screen? Okay. Yeah. Then I will just share the screen, just a second. Hiding all the unimportant stuff. So as I already uh, presented last week, we put some effort into our documentation setup and the documentation setup is now ready to be tested by everybody. So I added, uh, we have now three different levels of documentation. So the first one is more likely the pull request preview. So now when you go to your pull request, you will get your information regarding that there has been a Netlify build and you can even 
take a close look at your pull request at, at the changes within your pull request and you can click around and take a look this should on the one hand help you verify that all your changes you did are working with our build environment and not that something slips through uh, uh sl slip no not slip through slip slip slid, uh, slid through slip through yeah, yeah. And also, the, it should give the reviewers the possibility to take a look at your documentation in a rendered way without checking out the branches. In the, se the, the second one is the one for the main branch. So the main, it, it will be built regularly for the main branch on, on push changes or when the documentation has changed. And you can take a look at the main branch and this will always be up to date. So this will allow people to have a bleeding edge docu uh, documentation for those who are not relying on versions, but checking it out and can reference what they are currently using and see and, and have a place to look at the documentation of the current use. Uh, uh, and the Simon, third one. Simon, on that page, do you want to show them if they're working on a new PR, they need to choose releases and get the development one? Yeah, I will. I will check check oh, that okay. later. Okay. So okay. I will check through the branches, and then there is the live page, which is now a special kind of way to to uh, to show the presentation. So this is now the live page, and the live page is actually a version which is uh, which is an orphaned branch in our Git repository. So it be, instead of having that in a different repository, we now have an own branch within our repository called page, which contains only the documentation and also contains the documentation uh, for uh, different versions afterwards. No, so there will be a folder. Did somebody push you or something? Am I, never... I need to check something later. Uh, and this documentation, also, and the document and the releases up here, are ba uh, created based on the branches. Ah, my my bad. Now I know where where those docs folders are. I'm sorry, I was missing the doc folders, but they are in here. For each version, we have here then an own documentation folder, uh, which will auto, also, which will generate automatically this menu up here without any kind of configuration, etc. Where the latest one is tagged with latest. So you will always find the latest version. You can jump here also to an earlier version of the documentation. And if you want to go to the main branch, you have here the development link. And this will, sorry, the, we have the pull request open to fix this link. Uh, Lifecycle test.lsh, there is the pull request open to fix this domain, which will link you back to the, to the, the page. And we have here the same thing, which will then link you to the production page. Also within your pull request review, if you want to check something uh, on another branch, you also have here, uh, the development will bring you here and you have here the link to productions, which will bring you to the main reference page. Yeah, as I said, there are pull requests open to fix this link properly for the uh, menu. That's actually it. There is one part missing, which I was not aware of, was that there is also for on releasing, we're also extracting the examples to an example repository. This is something which I will uh, deliver today as an own separate GitHub action. So it's not hidden within the documentation build anymore. And that's actually it. If there are no, also if there are questions, feel free to ask. Just to let you know about our plan, it is we want, as a, if there are no concerns, no issues regarding that, we would, set everything to live within this week so that the new documentation will be deployed from this repository rather than the other repository and via Netlify. That's it from my side. Any questions? Not really. I think it's very cool that we have a setup in place one thing, maybe it's more a fine grain refinement. Uh, can after we select something from the release bar on the top, yeah. the drop down bar, can that name be there? Yeah, that's, because that's otherwise also, I don't know. That's also something I've thought about currently. What we what we maybe maybe also adding some information to the logo or something so that you have when you are in a PR review that you're dedicated know where you are. That's something. I also thought about and 
May I use the time for an additional uh, question, suggestion, feedback I put into the channel and just currently want to ask if this is a good idea, if I should create an issue for that? Totally. Okay. May I share my screen again? Oh, sorry. So I, uh, regarding, we we do have this fancy community repository in here, also within our project where we have the where we store all the information regarding adopters etc this is sometimes a little bit outdated it is it is also hard to navigate if you are here i prepared a little poc which is including this repository as a readme with minor readme adoptions so as a, with minor adoptions to the markdown file so adding just the information uh, i can to to better show you that I, I put like this uh, markdown uh, definitions up top. So it's not like really changing the file, but it's putting information like title, description, link title up here. And what this allows me then is I can include this repository up here as a, as a tree, can add those files here, be aware some of those markdown files do not have those changes, so they are not aware here. And then I can take a look at all the at all those files within the web page, like what is our community, how is it structured, what is our code of contact, what are the membership files, and they are now part of the documentation and easier accessible rather than this separate repository. The question for me is, do we want to pursue with that? Because we can also use that for if, if we have more sub projects, I'm not sure if they are coming or not coming, we can use the same approach because it's just still maintained within one repository and we can add them to multiple repository if we would like to, I sorry, if you have two pages. But the question is, do we want to render those markdown files also within our pages? And if so, where do I create the issue for that? I honestly liked it here in particular because we can highlight rock stars and people that contribute to the project. So we have a more visible place to shout out the support of the community. Plus everything is clear. Also the leader contribution, uh, leader contribution such. I like the idea, honestly. What about the rest? Thumbs up, down. I see one thumbs up, two, three, nice. Oh, the question hey. is, where do I create the issue? Do I create the issue in the community repository? Do I create the issue in the lifecycle KLT repository? Do I create two? One for adapting the community repository, one for, that's just more like the organizational part to have an overview and to, to track those efforts somehow, somewhat. No. Uh, so what you need to do is change the docs file in the KLT repo and adapt all markdown files that we want to show exactly. on the website. Therefore, I will uh, create a ticket <clears throat> in both places. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I will do that. That's fine. Then I will summarize them. Yeah. And one to change the readme me file with those headers in the community one, this will be a ticket for the community and then the ticket for changing the markdown files in the KLT repo. No. Would be another. Do we also want to do it to captain github.io or just a question. What do we have there at the moment? We already have a community section. Um, we can revisit then afterwards, I would say, and maybe align it. Then let's do in a two-step approach. First, change the KLT website, and then <clears throat> based on the knowledge that we have, we see if what went well, what we need to change for then changing the captain.github.io also. And it maybe helps us also to better structure the community repository because now we have an overview and maybe maybe we restructure some of the documents in there to make it better visible. Okay, perfect. Let me take notes. Okay. Uh, then we have some 
shared issue here, I see. Bye -bye. Oh gosh, sorry if I butter your name. Bavaya, Moritz, and Simon issue template. Uh, who added this item to the agenda? What we need to discuss here to Okay, I don't okay. think that's the wrong link because that has nothing to do that's with the, the issue. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, that PR just needs a review now, I think. Okie dokie. Then let's go to the next one. Uh, getting started with KLT, developer's perspective of KLT, its architecture and how it works. Who brought up this item in the agenda? Hey everyone, hey. It's, it, it was me, uh, Pratik Singh. This is my first uh, meeting and I recently tried to get involved with uh, KLT and I thought I can get some questions answered over here because uh, these things are missing in the docs and I really wanted to get started with code contributions here. Sure, so ask us anything, <laughs> mama. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like, uh, uh, Previously, when I was uh, in Captain, KLT was not started at that time, and it had the architecture section, which was pretty good. So I was wondering if I could get like an overview of how KLT works with Kubernetes, because that architecture thing is missing currently in the documentation. Right. There's actually a PR. Somebody is working on writing that up, but it's just starting. Okay. Maybe I can help with that if I get a little bit of idea. Yes, um, I would suggest uh, if you have specific questions, you can ask them now. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, you can ping us on Slack if you have any general topic so we can follow up. Yeah, so it's not any like fixed thing which I can ask. It's like a general topic. So I guess Slack would be a better place for that. Let me look for the specific PR. The architecture? Yeah. Yeah. Um, every time. The Misha. So uh, <clears throat> we can see a bit of text here, just very introductory, not much. Um, for you, a great place to start a bit with this is this graph, okay. plus a small description on top mm -hmm. to see how the different um, items work together. Mm -hmm. um, this picture is a bit outdated. For instance, we don't have two different controllers for the CLI, for SLI and SLO. Everything is bundled together at the moment mm -hmm. in what we call captain evaluation. Okay. Uh, yeah, but maybe we can have a follow up over Slack where I can describe a bit more how the different things work together. Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. And perfect. So okay. please ping me over uh, Slack, so yeah, I don't sure. forget about that. <laughs> well, like what's your, what's your Slack? Uh, Giovanni Liva. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, do it in the public because Amisha is needing that information to update this for the docs too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I don't have much time today, so expect an answer tomorrow from me. Yeah, yeah, okay, that, that, that'll work. Thank you. Then I think we can go to the next topic about the Datadog metric provider from Sudipto. Uh, what do you like to discuss about this, Sudipto? Yeah, basically, I need some more uh, reviews from you. So I got reviews from Anna, and I have addressed those. So I need more reviews from other community members. Sure. 
Perfect. So I will try to reserve some time today or tomorrow to also um, <clears throat> have a look. Actually, I assign myself so it's in my notifications and I won't forget about that. Nice. Thanks, Thanks for the contribution. Don, oh, I cannot open this link. Rakshit, you also add something to the agenda. Oh. Yeah, so actually I have recently been working on this YAML and YAML in feature. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask the community about any rules or any good practices they know of that we can add to this YAML in feature, like any set of rules they would like to see in this feature. Like so we can set. Yeah, we I can set. To see. See, mm -hmm. Please go ahead. No, no, okay. I uh, wanted to see how many files are broken after we run this linting. Oh, there is nothing. So if I would run this locally now with this set of rules, yeah. Uh, do we need to change any YAML file or everything works out of the box? No, we'll need to change some things. Uh, I had a doubt like we can set it to a warning or an error. So like will the warning uh, label would hinder the development or something? At the moment, I like that everything is warning. So no, it doesn't. By default, it's error, but we can set it to warning. I would add everything to warning so we can get a bit of understanding about what are the rules that we really need and what are the rules okay, that okay. we can disable because uh, with uh, customized, we might not have the possibility to fix them. Okay, so should I change everything to warning for now? Yes, exactly. And then we can do a follow up after we decide, okay, <clears throat> this is very critical and we want to instead enable and have it fixed. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Thanks to you. So let me take a note here. Um, uh, what we should uh, enforce afterwards. Any further topics from the community? Looks like, I uh, know. So I think we can call it a day. Thank you everyone. And have a great day everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Thanks, bye. bye.